nation that's on your side. This is News 12, first at 5. Several Richmond County deputies finding themselves on the wrong side of the law. This string of issues leading Sheriff Richard Roundtree to hold a news conference earlier today. News 12's Hallie Turner is live at 5. And Hallie, you were there for that news conference. Why does he think deputies keep taking these risks? Yeah, Mayor, the Roundtree says the jail is overcrowded and his staff is underpaid, making a bad combination when it comes to temptation. But that is an excuse, an excuse for anyone to violate their oath or throw away their career. He says during the hiring process, the rules of what will happen are made crystal clear. The hiring process isn't an easy one, according to the sheriff. Not only are the new hires questioned by two interview panels, they also go through the final review with, chief, with two chief deputies and the sheriff himself. He says it's made clear where the inmates will try to pull. Make it clear to every individual that we hire that the inmates are going to try you. They are going to approach you. They're going to try to manipulate you. Um, we lock people up in the past. So this is a personal conversation I've had with every deputy that I've hired. And what they are finding is the price for those willing to smuggle contraband is far more than they were expecting. But coming up all new tonight on News 12 at 6 o'clock, we dive deeper into that plan the Sheriff's Office wants to try to fix this. All right, thank you, Hallie. A lot of questions remain. All right, as you're heading out the door this afternoon, we do have some clear skies and we do have temperatures into the lower 90s. Fortunately, that cold front is moving through right now and we do have a little bit of a breeze out there. So that is definitely helping it not feel quite as hot as what we saw yesterday. The dew points are a little bit lower, so not feeling all that bad out there this afternoon. We'll take a closer look at home. The winds right now pretty gusty, gusting to 21 miles per hour in Thompson, 22 in Aiken, and sustained winds about 15 miles per hour around the metro. So a little bit breezy as that front moves through and we do have temperatures into the lower 90s 91 degrees between Evans and Augusta 87 in Aiken and lower 90s for some of our southern counties as well upper 80s uh, inside of Bobby Jones there at Daniel Field same thing in North Augusta sitting actually about 86 degrees so not too bad this afternoon for us as we go through this evening getting closer to dinner time we'll see mostly sunny skies so staying nice for this evening and those temps falling back out of the 90s into the upper 80s by about 7 o'clock this evening then a little bit later on tonight We'll notice those temps continuing to dip into the upper 70s and low 80s by about 9, mid 70s by 11, and then falling all the way back to the 60s as we go through tomorrow morning. But more of that summer heat is going to be on the way for us. We'll talk more about that coming up in the full forecast. But first, we'll get an update on first alert traffic. And now, first alert traffic. All right, let's go outside, right up, uh, right outside of our station here, Riverwatch Parkway and I-20. Everything moving pretty nicely right there. We'll go outside of Grovetown and I-20, uh, where we do have just that typical volume of everyone getting off the interstate there. Wheeler Road and I-20, so we got a little bit of a pattern going on here this afternoon. Uh, the interstate there, uh, just before the Bobby Jones Expressway, everything looks to be moving pretty nicely right now. More on that forecast coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thanks, Anthony. For the second time in less than a year, the question of abortion access in South Carolina now rests with the state Supreme Court. The five male justices heard arguments today in a challenge to the state's new six-week ban after they struck down a similar law in January. Our state house reporter, Mary Green, was in that courtroom. Tuesday's proceedings lasted just over an hour with attorneys for the state and for South Carolina's abortion providers making their arguments answering questions justices peppered at them. A central question will be if this new law is different enough from the one the court struck down in January to warrant a different outcome this time. Attorneys for South Carolina abortion providers argue this new law, which Governor Henry McMaster signed last month, and which a court blocked from being enforced the next day, is functionally the same as what justices ruled unconstitutional five months ago. It bans most abortions after fetal cardiac activity is detected, typically around six weeks into a pregnancy, and allows for limited exceptions to save the mother's life in cases involving sexual assault victims and in cases of fatal fetal anomaly. These women can know they are pregnant in their, that time, but that we also know as a matter of statistics and evidence that they do know that they are pregnant in that time. Where is this evidence? We keep talking about the evidence. There's not one shred of evidence submitted in this record. There is a distinction, I think, legally between do women know and can women know? There are many factors to consider beyond 
just whether uh, someone has the ability to recognize that they're pregnant. Attorneys for abortion providers argue this law violates the state's constitutional right to privacy, the basis on which the previous law was struck down in a three to two decision. My clients are back here today because the General Assembly ignored this court's ruling and enacted a virtually identical law, Senate Bill 474, which also bans abortion at six weeks. One opinion from this court is not enough to trigger binding precedent. Attorneys for the state say the Republican-controlled legislature made language changes to the bill to address concerns justices raised in their previous ruling, particularly Justice John Cannon's view. There is a very good argument that the January decision is not precedential and is not binding. Another key difference hanging over Tuesday's proceedings is that the South Carolina Supreme Court no longer has a woman, as it did the last time. There's no timeline for justices to deliver their decision. Last time a ruling came about three months after oral arguments. Attorneys for the abortion providers say given the expedited schedule that justices set for Tuesday's hearing, they wouldn't be surprised if a ruling comes more quickly this time around. Reporting Columbia, I'm Mary Green. Until the Supreme Court or another state court rules otherwise, abortion remained legal in South Carolina through about 20 weeks into a pregnancy. The Aiken County coroner is working to figure out how a 23-year-old woman ended up dead, her body behind a storage building. The coroner says Destiny Hazel was found near a home on Wamrath Road around 10 o'clock this morning. An autopsy is set for tomorrow. A memorial dedicated to 29 murder victims unveiled today in Atlanta. The Atlanta Children's Eternal Flame Memorial honors victims whose lives were cut short. Between July 1979 and the spring of 1981, 29 African-American children, teenagers, and young adults, most of them boys, were murdered. Their bodies were dumped on sidewalks and in rivers across Fulton, DeKalb, and Rockdale counties. Now families hope this new memorial will honor their lives. Memorial. It will be a reminder to each of us. Uh, that their lives will matter forever. I'm going to be bringing my grandchildren and my children as well. Wayne Williams is the man convicted of two of these murders. He's believed to have been responsible for many more, but to this day, he maintains his innocence. The Atlanta Children's Memorial Task Force is still processing new DNA to bring closures to other families. We are learning more tonight about a deadly small plane crash that killed three men early yesterday morning near the Claxton Evans County Airport. We now know that two of the victims are from Reedsville. One is identified as Bobby Smith. Smith was a volunteer who spent his time teaching others how to fly planes. His family says they are shocked and devastated to learn of his death. Regardless of what the probable cause is finally determined to be, um, three awesome people were lost unnecessarily. Federal investigators are working to figure out what caused this crash. The names of the other people who died will be released when the crime lab investigation is finished. The International African American Museum in Charleston is now open. People are coming from all across the country to learn what the state-of-the-art museum can teach about the history of Africans here. About half of all enslaved people were processed through the very ground that museum now stands on. We have more than nine galleries and exhibition areas to try to put the African American story in its full context. So our storyline goes from 300 uh, BCE all the way up to modern times, and for good reason, um, as we think about trying to get this full story uh, in all of its nuances. It takes about 45 minutes to walk through the exhibits, and there are also gardens and reflection pools on the grounds. Georgia Governor Brian Kemp returning from one of his first trips abroad since the pandemic. What he was there to discuss, coming up. And as you're heading out the door this afternoon, we have temperatures in the upper 80s and low 90s, and it's still going to be heating up as we go through this week. Upper 90s expected by Friday, as well as the upcoming weekend. Full forecast when we come back. Diamond. With the 4th of July holiday just around the corner, states like California are preparing for wildfires 
started by fireworks. Cal Fire says the timing of this fire, this year's one, this season affected by a wet winter. But on the flip side, more rain means more grass and more fuel. Now that we're entering the heart of the summer months. So hopefully we won't have as many, I guess, fuel to add to our fire season here, Anthony. Yeah. We, we started, I mean, we had some a couple months ago. It wasn't too bad, but we're talking 93 yep. degrees today. Thankfully, <laughs> some rain yesterday we did, may we have helped with that. Storms. Yeah, we had some good storms yesterday, and we had that front move through today. So fortunately for us, those dew points, that makes it feel pretty sticky. Those are going to be a little bit lower for us as you're going outside today. So you're not going to notice just getting hit with a wall of humidity as you step outside this afternoon. So that's really good news for us. But you look at both of our cameras here, Augusta is well as Grove Town, you might have noticed it's just a little bit hazy out there. So we do have a couple uh, areas of wildfire smoke that's starting to move through the region even more, uh, pushing through sections of North Carolina, Virginia, West Virginia, and that could creep into the CSRA, move a little bit further south as we go through the next couple of days. And those temperatures are expecting to warm back up to the mid 90s over the next few days as well. But currently we're in the upper 80s from Washington all the way through Edgefield, 91 in Aiken as well as in Augusta, and sticking to those lower 90s. 92 between Waynesboro as well as in Louisville. Heat index, like I mentioned, not quite as high as what we saw yesterday. That's really thanks to that front moving through and helping to dry that air out a little bit more. Feeling like 94 as you're stepping outside in Louisville right now. And later on this evening, we're just going to stay dry. There's that front right now in the middle of the CSRA. A few showers out to sea. We're not expecting any rainfall as you're uh, going out the door later on this evening. So if you're going to sit outside, grab some food, great opportunity there. Lots of sunshine temperatures holding right around 90 degrees by 6 o'clock with mostly sunny skies and then we'll start to drop those temperatures once we get past sunset those temps getting closer to about 80 by 9 o'clock and then continue to fall back down into the 70s by about midnight and then we're not done yet we're going to go all the way down to the 60s for tomorrow morning right around 68 degrees here in Augusta then working our way back up to the 80s by about midday any golfing plans in the morning or trying to get any yard work done in the morning you're going to be in good shape there not in not, not in the way of a lot of humidity in the morning, but it will get a little bit sticky for the afternoon. Going to be a good pool forecast. We do have those temperatures sticking to those lower 90s, 91 by about 4, with an afternoon high closer to about 93 degrees. And this isn't going to be the only 90 degree day that we're going to talk about this week. That will start to go up even more by Thursday and Friday, 95 there, and then 98 and 97 for the upcoming weekend. So summer is definitely making a comeback there. And, you know, whenever you're walking the pets outside, especially this time of year, when we have days like today where we're at 90 degrees, if the concrete or the asphalt roads are in that direct sunlight, that can heat up pretty quickly. So that black surface can get up to 140 degrees. So just make sure you check that temperature. Put your hand on it for a couple of seconds. If it's too hot for your hand, it is too hot for your pet. So make sure you're taking some precautions there. Rain chances will start to go back up as we go through the end of the work week. And here's a look at that hour-by-hour -hour forecast. A few scattered storms for Friday, especially Friday afternoon, Friday night. Then we'll do the same thing as we go through the day on Saturday. Saturday afternoon, a few scattered showers and thunderstorms there. And we'll do that one more time throughout the day on Sunday. Those temperatures are going to be the big story this week. Upper 90s both Saturday and Sunday afternoons. All right, thanks for that, Anthony. Georgia Governor Brian Kemp returning from a recent trip abroad with a big focus on aviation. And one Georgia hospital seeing double as a set of twins now work at the same hospital. That might be a little confusing, right? We introduce you to the Battle Twins, coming up. First lines now. It's dud season in Waynesboro. Choose the exact vehicle you want, and we'll deliver it within 500 miles. Challengers and Chargers, discounted up to $5,000. Shop good to go Waynesboro.com to save time and money. Camera gigantic. Spread for five seventy six. You'll find more deals just like these throughout the store. And right now, get up to 36 months special finance. Hurry in to get these great deals while they last. The red, white, and new sale going on right now at Great Bills on Furniture. Open Tuesday through Saturday, 10 to 6. It's Ram season for a limited time in Waynesboro. Save up to 10 grand on Ram 2500 diesels. Shop good to go Waynesboro.com to save time and money. Good to go Waynesboro.com. <laughs> After your accident, who did you call? I called Dorsey. Why did you call? To get the mall out. Not everyone.
one gets to say they are a twin, but at the Phoebe Sumter Hospital in America's Georgia, the battle twins are doubling down to greet everyone with a smile. Fallon Howard has that story. I like working here, because um, we set the tone when we're who the first ones being seen when you first come in the door. So you know, we always work oh, all night. Not everyone gets to say they are a twin, but at the Phoebe Sumter Hospital in America's Georgia, the battle twins are doubling down to greet everyone with a smile. Fallon Howard has that story. I like working here, because um, we set the tone when we're who the first ones being seen when you first come in the door. So you know, we always smiling, so both of us, we smile all day. So I feel like, you know, it's nice for us to come in and see a smiling face, a happy person at the door when they first get in here and be greeted. Charnisha, the early bird twin, likes to use her personality to brighten others' day. One man actually came in, he's like, why are you so happy early in the morning? I was like, it's morning, you supposed to be up and happy. But he was like, not me, I'm having surgery. I was like, well, I hope everything goes well with your surgery. I said, I'll see you when you come back. And he did, well, he did come back through, and he was like, everything went well. I said, I know it would. The battle twins have never been separated before, and this just adds to the uniqueness of being a twin, as some would call the best friend. Best thing I can say about both of them um, is that you can't tell the difference. They're identical twins, but they're identical in a way that is very good in terms of they exude um, customer service. They're very nice young ladies. They want to have a career in healthcare. So not only do we want them here at um, the hostess desk, but we think they can have a long career in the Phoebe Health System. Phoebe Way is something all employees must complete to start offering service to everyone. The battle twins are just one example of how they cater to everyone. I like knowing that she's here. You know, I'm not alone by myself down there. I can always call her for help. You know, it's like I, I just, like I said, I just started and anything go wrong, like, hey, Misha, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to say? You know, even though I am getting trained, you know, she's been here longer than I have. So it's nice having someone to be able to talk to. Now, quite the rarity for siblings to work at the same place, never mind twins. At least they have different hairstyles. <laughs> you can at least tell them apart. Former South Carolina State Representative Curva, Curtis Navinet Sr. has passed away. Now, this is according to Charleston County officials. Navinet was the first African-American appointed to the Charleston County Election Commission. He served from 1991 to 99. He was 91 years old. Well, today we saw temperatures make it into the lower 90s, but mid and upper 90s are going to be coming in as we go through the end of the work week. So really going to be feeling like summer force. 98 degrees as we go through the day on Saturday. We'll have another check of that forecast when we come back. But first, here's a look at today's winner for our sunshade. It's Miss Barbara Shear from Augusta. If you want to enter, head to WRDW.com. Go to the contest section of our website and enter to win. You can really use one of those sunshades right now with all of that summer heat. Another check of that forecast when we come back. Virgin Galactic announcing its historic crew for the company's first commercial space flight. The target flight date is set for this Thursday from Spaceport America in New Mexico. Three people will be on board for the 90-minute flight, all from the Italian Air Force and National Research Council of Italy. I'm sorry. <laughs> that is not you, Anthony. <laughs> Today, less than 700 people have traveled to space. That would be so cool if all of a sudden I was like, actually, Meredith, there's a little guest uh, guy going up there, and it's like, turns out that's me. No, no, no. That would be. I know. I wish I was. Though. I wish I was announcing <laughs> that. That that is why you are leaving. That today is your last day here at uh, News 12. I know. Because you're going so to space. That would be. I mean, 
that'd be incredible to say, sorry guys, I'm leaving, but space calls, but no, just going to be traveling up north and get to be a little bit closer to family. A little sad to be leaving, but uh, I'm very happy with my time here, but yeah, going to miss everyone down south for sure. All right, guys, one more check of the forecast for the 5 o'clock half hour. We have some sunny skies right now, a little bit of some wildfire smoke higher up in the atmosphere, and the dew points, fortunately, for today are a little bit lower, so 60 degrees dew point is making it feel like the current temperature. Not quite look like what we saw yesterday where it felt close to 100, but that's going to come back pretty quickly as we get closer to the upcoming weekend. Those 90s will turn to upper 90s by Saturday and Sunday, and with that higher heat, those storm chances also going back up. We got much more news and weather coming, and don't worry, Anthony, he hasn't left yet. We still got some news and weather with him coming up too, All through so. tonight. That's right. We're back in a bit. Introducing the first alert radar network.